Hi there, it's Matthew from Patchworks, and today we're gonna to have a look at the PWM Malevolent, a fully analog synthesizer made in collaboration with Future Sound Systems. PWM Malevolent is a dual oscillator synthesizer. The Malevolent has 38 different patch points. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of them on the front panel here, as well as a clock input and output on the back of the panel. It has a 32 key keyboard, vibrato, six arpeggiator modes for the arpeggiator, and a 12 dB multi-mode filter. As far as modulation goes, you have an LFO with a triangle and a square wave, and then two envelopes which you're able to freely route across the synthesizer. This is a semi-modular synthesizer, meaning that there is a lot of normaled positions in the synthesizer, however, you're able to break those normals and patch things anywhere you'd like, so you can get very creative with your sound design. Now, I've paired the Malevolent with the Teenage Engineering TX6 because it has a lot of great sounding effects, and a synthesizer like this, a, a monophonic analog synthesizer, can really benefit from some tasty effects. So that's what I decided to bring along with me. So we'll get to demonstrate some of the effects here, namely the chorus, the delay, and the reverb that you'll find in the TX6. So to start off my demonstration, besides the cool jams that we'll have in the video, I'm just gonna do a couple of classic filter sweeps on the different oscillator shapes. So you can get an idea of how this sounds and how it compares to other synthesizers that you might be interested in. So to start it off, I'm gonna start with the sawtooth wave on VCO1 and I'm gonna do a filter sweep with no resonance and then I'll start bringing resonance in and we'll go through the wave shapes and then eventually we'll bring in VCO2 and talk a little bit more about what you can do with this synthesizer. So I'm gonna bring some resonance in now. A lot of resonance. Sounds good with a lot of resonance. So the wave shapes that we have to work with are a sawtooth wave, and then we have a triangle, and then we have a pulse wave, and we're able to modulate those waveforms. So there's actually a wave shaper on both the oscillators, which you can modulate either with the LFO, which is normaled to that wave shaper. You can adjust that with the um, shape mod knob right here on both the VCOs, or you can run one of the other sources like the envelope or external gear, if you'd like, into the wave shaper and use that as a modulation source. So I'm gonna move over to the triangle, and you're able to use these wave shapes all at the same time if you'd like. You don't have to just pick one. You can have all three running on both of these. So you can get some pretty interesting tones going. So here's the triangle wave. And I'm not gonna do the filter cutoff sweep on the triangle because it's, it's not gonna be very effective to show its sound. So I'm just gonna open the cutoff and let you listen to it. We'll go up a couple octaves. We'll go ahead and throw some delay behind that. Sounds good. 
turn that delay off, switch over to the pulse wave here. Go back down an octave. So with the pulse wave, you're gonna to wanna to modulate that shape um, parameter so that you can get that pulse width modulation. So, hence the name PWM, right? So you can do it manually like this, or we can use the LFO, which is moving moderately quickly. Here's an audio rate. Sounds pretty good. Now let's hear what this triangle actually sounds like when we adjust the shape. It sounds pretty cool. Now the sawtooth. Bit crush it. Just for fun. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about what's on the panel here. To the left here, we have our keys output, so we can take the velocity, because this is a velocity sensitive keyboard, we can route that anywhere we like. So for instance, we could take the velocity out and route that into our FM input on our filter, and we can use the velocity to adjust our filter cutoff, so key tracking for the filter. So very light notes, harder. So that's pretty cool, I like that they have that feature. You can also take the velocity and just route it to anything you want. That's the fun with a semi-modular synthesizer or synthesizer that just has so many patch points like the Malevolent has. Below that, we have a gate output from the keyboard. So you could send these gates to another synthesizer if you wanted. To the right of the keys patch bay here, we have our LFO patch bay, where you can send your triangle and your square wave out. And then of course, we have the VCO, which we already were taking a look at. We have our sawtooth triangle pulse wave and just a straight up output. And then we have our one volt per octave input, so we can do some interesting modulations with our modulation sources to the one volt per octave, or we can sequence it with external gear. And then we have our wave shaper input and FM1 and FM2 input. So FM1 is gonna be envelope one, FM2 is gonna be your LFO, and it's normaled to be a triangle. So moving on from the VCOs, we have our mixer section here, which we can run auxiliary sounds into this synthesizer if you'd like. So we could plug a you know, an OP1 if we wanted into the auxiliary input and process it inside this synthesizer. Above that, we have our noise output, which we can use as another modulation source. So we could take this noise and again, just run it into our filters FM input, crank up that modulation, and you can hear that. It's very dirty, it's a really cool sound. So then we also have our aux level and our noise level. Nice sounding noise. And then we move over from there over to our 12 dB filter, which is a multi-mode filter. So we have low pass, band pass, high pass, and then two modulation sources that are normaled to your filter. We have envelope one normaled over to our filter. Envelope two is actually normaled over to our VCA, but we'll get over to that in a second. And then we also have our LFO, which is normaled to the second FM input. So I'm turning up that LFO which again is the triangle for the shape of the LFO. Pretty cool. And then we have our VCF output, so we could break the normal of the pathway that's inside the synthesizer and take our VCF and go somewhere else if we wanted, over to the oscillators if we want, or into another device such as your Eurorack system. 
Then we also have our envelope section, so we can send those gates. As I mentioned before, we could take the gate from the keyboard and we could plug them directly into the envelopes if we wanted to use a different envelope. Then we have our envelope section, so we're able to take our envelope one and envelope two, route them to different inputs. And then we have our inputs for our envelope section as well. Below that, we have our VCA section. So we have AM1 and AM2, and these are your amplitude modulations. So this is where you can either send your LFO, which is by default normaled to AM2. And we can also plug other things into it if we want to break that normal, but it's going to be normaled from our LFO triangle. And then envelope two, which is right here, that's going to be your VCA. So when you're using the drive, which sounds really good, you actually want to turn down either your master volume or your amplitude one uh, attenuator here. Turn up that drive. Let me get that. if you turn up the drive and the AM1, it's going to be super loud. So keep that in mind. Turn that drive back down. And you can also change it from gated or drones. Okay, so that kind of covers this panel right here. And of course, you have your output, which you can route to other things if you'd like, and then your master volume. And you also have outputs on the back for line level plugging into whatever you want to, headphones or an audio interface or another effects module. So down here, we have our arpeggiator which we have six different arpeggiator modes. We can change the octaves, and then we have vibrato, and we have this fun little joystick that we can play with. So let me show you how that works. So first I'm gonna turn on the arpeggiator, and we're gonna go over this little section here. Which is moving kind of slowly, so I'm gonna turn up the arp speed here. You, and to note, this is something important, you can sync the arpeggiator to Eurorack stuff if you like, because it has clock in and out on the back and that will sync the arpeggiator, which is awesome. Bring in the other oscillator. I could turn hold on by pushing down on this joystick. Turn on reverb. If I want to add a couple octaves to the arpeggiator, I hold ARP and hit octave up. That sounds pretty rad. I mean, that right there is kind of what you're going for when you pick up the Malevolent, is being able to just make those tones right away. It was just a simple reverb patch on the TX6 plus the arpeggiator, and it just sounds great right away. Very simple. So just to talk about for one second before I get back to this, I personally think this synthesizer is a great entryway into semi-modular and analog synthesis because it gives you everything you need to make some really complex timbres using analog oscillators and an analog filter. So it's a very fun synthesizer. I expect a lot of exploration to be done as this gets into more people's hands. And they have some great uh, patch cards that you can download off their website so you can remember your patches because again, fully analog and you can't store your patches. There's nothing digital in here. So you can download those patch prompt cards and save your patches. Back over to this little section, we just went over the arpeggiator. If you're holding ARP and move this joystick, you can change the different arpeggiator modes. Let's go back into hold real quick. Let me turn off that reverb. So hold, just do a D. Okay, so we can change our arpeggiator. So now we are ascending. That's a cool one. So a lot of fun. 
These are kind of the classic things that you'll find yourself doing with the Malevolent, I think. So we also have vibrato. When vibrato is not engaged, this joystick works like this. It's a pitch bend. When vibrato is engaged, let me turn off that reverb, works like this. If you want to change how much this pitch bend effects, you can move it up in semitone by holding vibrato and hitting the plus and minus button, and this is going to change how much pitch bend that you have. Cool, so I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of the PWM Malevolent. I'm Matthew from Patchworks, and I'll see you next time.